So this week I spent 48 hours arguing with some guy online. Now, given that it's the summer holidays and I've got five small children, that time might have been better spent instead interacting with them. Although my wife would argue that this was just the excuse I needed to not have to play with them. But you know what was the most annoying and irksome part of the entire thing? Technically, he was right. Last week on Headliners, every night at 11 p.m., when I was talking about the story that the Tavistock Gender Identity Clinic is closing after being found unsafe, I made the comment that the puberty blockers they've been prescribing to children, in one case just after one session, has serious side effects. And this was despite trans activists arguing that they were totally and utterly safe. Apart from indications that it affects long-term brain and sexual development, I said it's 100% been proven that it diminishes bone density. After I posted the entire four and a half minute clip on Twitter, a man with he, him pronouns in his bio, which is about as firm an indicator as you can get of his position on this particular debate, commented, not strictly true. I politely asked for clarification and he demanded medical proof about the side effects of puberty blockers. Now, I've seen the same tactic used for many years fighting far left Corbynite trolls. It's meant to drain your time and resolve. And I should have just hit straight back with show me evidence that puberty blockers are 100 percent safe. I mean, this is children we're talking about, right? But I went down the rabbit hole to the point where the crux of his argument became that I'd said the negative effects on bone density had 100 percent been proven. It didn't matter the numerous medical studies and newspaper articles and peer reviews I linked to. Everything hinged on this 100 percent claim. And why, oh, why? didn't I just concede this point? It's very difficult to prove anything 100% in medicine, and it wouldn't change the fact that the Tavistock was closing after actual experts had found it unsafe for children, and after many whistleblowers had revealed some of the damaging practices that had become embedded there. And whether 99%, 80%, or 70%, there's potentially a huge medical scandal that we're going to see played out in the coming years. But no. Instead, I just pushed ever onward when I could have spent that time with my children learning their names. I think partly it's because of ego, partly because I've learned that just by pushing conversations further, you get most people to expose themselves, which he did after referring to women as the C word. But mostly, and now we're finally getting to the crux of what I want to discuss with you, somewhere along the way, with the toxicity of social media and the seeming increasing polarity we express our opinion on political issues, we've sadly lost the ability to say, you've got a point. Regardless of what we're advocating for, whether it be Brexit, trans rights, or a particular political party or politician, it's become normal that if we were to ever make the tiniest concession to our opponents, the entire framework of our argument might crumble. It's why for years Stonewall's policy on trans rights has been hashtag tag, no debate and to just ignore where they might conflict with established women's rights. And this week, Jeremy Corbyn appeared on a pro-Iranian, pro-Russian mouthpiece and plainly stated that Western powers shouldn't be supplying arms to the Ukrainians to help them in their fight back against the invasion by Russia. Does he really think that without the means to fight back, Russia will miraculously go away. He's promoting a childlike and dangerous understanding of international politics that appeasing a dictator would in any way lead to peace. He was also played into anti-Semitic tropes by implying it was Israel and Netanyahu that somehow led to his political downfall, like they have any influence or even care about UK politics. Netanyahu didn't even have the power to prevent his own downfall. You'd think that with crank, uh, Corbyn's crankery on full display, that might be enough for some of his numerous and vociferous advocates of the last years to disassociate themselves with him or, heaven forbid, even criticise him. What further proof is needed to see how inappropriate a choice he would have been to run this country? That wouldn't prevent people from advocating from some of his positions on the re redistribution of wealth or fighting for a fairer society. But no... Most of his fans are doubling down, tripling down, putting their head in the sand and finger in their ears, anything to avoid stating, you have a point. 
And obviously, I'm as guilty as anyone. But I have been trying. I can take a guess what position most of you have on Brexit, and respectfully, I disagree. The problem was I didn't always respectfully disagree. And like a good portion of this country, I didn't listen. I judged. I wanted a second referendum, referendum, and I was wrong. I still think Brexit is a bad idea, but I've come round to certain arguments about European oversight. But then again, with just 100,000 people choosing the next leader of our country, I think, you know, we're not exactly the masters of our own domain either. But that argument is done, and now I agree we need to get on with making the best of this situation and limiting any damage. I also recognise there's more I can learn, and I could just be totally wrong compared to other things I'm passionate about, uh, about like the gender debate, anti-Semitism, and comic books. There are gaps in my knowledge, and yet still there are many people I see on both sides of the Brexit debate who have become so entrenched they can never just stop for a second, reconsider a new fact or argument, and go. You've got a point, and whichever cause it is that you care about, I think that can only hurt it if you're like that. Because I, I'd argue that the people I do see making concessions are the ones whose positions are overall the strongest. When you say you've got a point, you also have an opportunity, an opportunity to reframe, refine, and remake your argument in a different way and make it better. That's what I think the purpose of this channel is. What it's achieved and its huge promise: talk more, listen more, agree to disagree, and every so often say, "You've got a point." And as to the man that I was arguing with online, there is a happy ending. I blocked him. He was so incredibly annoying. But I did have a lovely week with the kids. Right, let's get on with the fun.